Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my annual sci-fi build. Uh, the kit's been kindly donated to me by uh, Nick at Grey Primer. Uh, if you don't know Nick, go check out his channel. He does some fantastic work on uh, small figures, orcs, that sort of thing. Superb figure painter. Please, all his links and details are in the description below so if you can go like and subscribe. Now this is uh, the XO frame from Obsolete. Um, this particular one is the RX-03 Toad. Uh, there are a number of these uh, models in the series and uh, it's all in 1 35th scale. So not only do you have the exo frame but you also have the armour that goes on top as well. And I'm going to be building both of these um, so you can decide yourself whether you just want to do the exo frame or if you want to do the full Monty armour build. The instructions uh, are all in a foreign language, um, but uh, very straightforward to talk indeed, and uh, had no issues with the instructions whatsoever. And I must say the fit was very good indeed, to the extent that you probably don't even need to use any glue. Uh, very tightly fitted and fully working, as we will later see. Now, the uh, Obsolete uh, is in fact a cartoon uh, that's on YouTube that you can watch and uh, I took some stills uh, from the uh, cartoon uh, for reference and it also gives you an idea of uh, how the model's going to look when fully finished. However, being me, uh, I have uh, had a bit of artistic license and added some of my own details on. So if we start off with the uh, Exo frame, uh, as I said earlier, it fits perfectly, no issues, however, each part does have a nasty seam line running through it. So there is a little bit of cleaning up that you're gonna to have to do. Um, so as you can see here, I'm just using my PE files um, and then I'll be getting out the sandy stick uh, just to take the, the worst of it off. And because it is a sort of soft, soft type of plastic, uh, there is no issue at all in cleaning up each of the parts. Now I did decide to add a little bit of detail uh, with, with some offcuts from a PE set um, because on the cartoon you can see that there are little grills um, and I wasn't happy basically with how it all ended up so in the end it did all come off. Um, there was a couple of bits that needed filling but to be honest with you, you won't see it anyway. It, most of it got covered up um, and that was the only the only issue that I had on uh, as far as the fit goes. The rest of it fit, fit, fitted perfectly. And as you can see, it's all fully working. So you can have lots of different positions on the XO frame. I added to, uh, decided to add a little bit of detail up on the shoulder there. Um, I created a, a small hole uh, on both sides of, of the shoulder using a, a, a small chisel and a matter of just scraping back uh, the plastic bit of a long time job and then i used a um, plastic rod um, and just added in that detail really pleased with how that turned out until i realized that it will actually get covered up the armor but if you're just going for the exo frame it may be a piece of detail that you would like to add in yourself as for the uh, central hub, um, there was a little bit of detailing there that needed to be added again with the three sections of plastic rod. Now these are your main connectors uh, for the arms and the legs. They are very tight. Uh, that should have protruded like the other one does. Um, so that was the first one. So what I did on the other ones is that I just cleaned out each of the holes uh, with the velour file. And then as you can see, that then fitted in perfectly. So whether it was my kit, I don't know, but you may need to clean out those holes to get a nice fit. These are the legs, um, the central hub that has a real nasty seam line going through it and that did take a lot of time to clean up, but worth it in the end. There's also a large hole on each of the legs, as you can see that had to be filled in uh, with filler. And then I started adding some detail using uh, Tamiya uh, wire, plastic coated wire, uh, to simulate the uh, cabling on the leg. As for the wheel, uh, the, the tread, you do lose a bit of the tread when sanding off the uh, sprue connectors. So just simply use your sharp knife and you can add that tread back. On the f uh, cartoon, uh, the central hubs do have uh, a plastic disc that's cut into four. So just using the eyelet maker and some plastic card, that was very easily reproduced and I was really pleased with how that looked. There were some wires um, up on the top of the leg that were missing. 
um, again just using your micro drill and uh, some more of that Tamiya cable just super glued in each of the ends and then when that was uh, dry I would then bend it round and super glue it into the other end as well again a bit more detailing and then some wires were put up on on the head part as well that we're missing using the same uh, system so that's the height of it it's just three inches tall I'll just run through some of the detailing again it is fully working now one thing I will point out to you is as you can see uh, this exo frame has the hands and it has the feet if you're going to be doing the armor version i.e. putting all the armor on top those feet and those hands have to be removed so do not glue them on unless you're going to be doing the exo frame and like I said to you right at the start to be honest with you you don't need any glue at all really all of this just snaps into place and as you can see is fully working Now one of the options you have if you're just going to do the exo frame is that you can have a driver. Uh, she's a young lady here in the corner, quite easy to put together if you want to and then she has a cradle that you can stick on the back as well. Now I did miss out some of the detailing when I was uh, finishing off. Um, there was uh, sort of cabling junctions on one of the leg, on both of the legs and so that was uh, simply replicated uh, using a plasti rod and also uh, fixed in place with a strip of pewter along the top. Really pleased with how that turned out. So on the instructions, um, you can see here uh, how the cradle and the young lady goes on. And again, if you're gonna be doing the armor, how it all comes off as well. So please don't glue any of that into place. So that's the exo frame. Uh, so let's move on to the armor itself. Again, loads of seam lines. The biggest problem with this is all these handles had to come off. All of the lifting eyes had to be drilled out as well. The two lifting hooks there, uh, I decided to, to leave as they were because that was just too much hassle uh, to replicate those. But there was lots of room for improvement. But this is very much on the small scale. As you can see, this is uh, the size of my thumb. So lots of fiddly work ahead. So everything was trimmed off, taken off, and then heel, uh, holes were drilled out um, for the handles and for the lifting eyes. And then for the handles themselves, uh, I used the RB tools, bending tool, and some copper wire. On the cartoon, the handles are varying sizes, but I just could not be asked with that at all. I just went for the one, one size fits all. And then just systematically went went round uh, the, the top of the armour and, and, and added in the handles. I forget now how many handles altogether, but I think there's about 30 on this build, so there's quite a few to be done. The underside fitted in well, uh, just needed a bit of a trim. The grenade launchers, um, again, were a bit basic in detail, so they, they were trimmed off and taken off. And then using the RB tools cutter with some plastic rod, I made some fresh grenades, and those were uh, glued in place. And then a little bit of detailing on top uh, using the uh, punch and die set. So I was really pleased with, with how they looked. And then on the cartoon, everything is uh, nut and bolts. Um, I personally prefer rivets. I just like the, 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 the look of rivets. So I replaced all the uh, nuts and bolts with rivets all over the uh, whole of the armor. A little bit of extra detailing was needed at the top, so that was replaced with a PE handle uh, that was just made for, for, from a scrap strip of PE. Very straightforward. Uh, I did actually add some meng nuts on, onto the top there. There was a couple of other little handles and discs that needed to be put on, but all in all, I was really pleased with how that had all been blinged up. And here's some photos for you. The actual uh, gun uh, that the guy uses, uh, the only detailing here was just to replace the handles again. Uh, and I just added a bit of grip onto the handle using 0.3 mil wire. This type of lightsaber weapon, um, the, the long protruding bit is if it's on, 
uh, on my model it's going to be stored away so I just uh, removed that and then it was a matter of, a matter of hollowing out all of the uh, lightsaber so first of all just make a hole with the uh, auger and then using a, a small drill bit then a slightly larger drill bit um, it's a matter of just taking out as much of the plastic as you possibly can and then finally using a tungsten bit drill clean it all out and then what I needed to do was to get uh, the wafer thin and the way I like to do that is just to get the craft knife in there and finish it off nicely and there we go really pleased with how that turned out yeah then on the actual holes themselves on the side it was a matter of again getting the auger in there and then getting a very fine uh, micro drill and drilling each one of those out and there we have it and that will go on the side of this main part here this has all been glued in together um, as you can see more handles to be removed more eyelets to be re drilled out the aerials were replaced uh, the windows um, I've put uh, foil on those later on which we'll go into now this is where the driver sits um, so this can obviously back end can come out uh, however I've glued it in place because I've decided to put a little bit of armor on the back there um, and that will be uh, done using a piece of plastic card but I'll go into more detail on that in, in a moment and that goes onto the back of his door like that as you can see so if you want it open you can have it open like that and you do actually have a figure that can go inside as well which is provided in the kit I didn't bother because th there's precious little detail inside so as far as the armor on the back it was just a matter of uh, using the 0.25 mil plastic card drilling out the four holes and putting in some one mil plastic rod and then really just trimmed it down into size and then later added on some uh, bolt heads now a bit of detail that was missing on the side was was a side recess um, so that was marked out and then using the, the knife and sanding and scraping that was all added on in there's some handles missing so those were put in there with a little hatch doorway as well also on the cartoon there is a, a spare ammo holder on the side of the main body so I just scratch built that with uh, off cuts of uh, plastic card and then the lightsaber put on top and the gun on the side as well so really pleased with how that was all now looking and even on the end of the uh, spare magazine there's a small bullet that I uh, sculpted as well more handles uh, had to be done on the front uh, the uh, headlights they were drilled out and they'll be filled in later with some clear putty um, again more handles on the flaps uh, they were in the recess so they were taken out and replaced now the feet uh, there's little connectors at the front of these feet because there is another model where you have big feet where if he was going through water so I decided to scrape all of that off and just made myself some shoes um, using the off cuts of plastic card and again some plastic card discs uh, for the screws on the side as well just as a little feature a bit of detailing uh, some of the armor was too thick so as you can see here uh, I've scraped back the one on the left so you can see the comparison just using craft knife and uh, sanding sticks more handles uh, replaced on the uh, shoulder armor uh, really pleased with those uh, they look quite pretty cool and on the uh, uh, further down the arm there's more armor which needed more riveting and I added uh, some plastic rod there because I decided to have some more protective plates so there's another protective plate that's going to go on that arm as well uh, really pleased with, with, with how that was looking and there's the uh, rear armor all finished now with the meng nuts on top quick pro tip uh, when you're adding uh, surface texture don't do it straight from the Mr. Surfacer bottle pour it out in, into a container and do it from there because otherwise your Mr. Surfacer will just dry out in that pot so quickly and there we go that's the surfacing done on both of the uh, armor I'm really pleased with how that turned out 
again quick tip once you've done it sand it back and that's the best way that you get your texture so I'll just quickly run through each individual item uh, this is how uh, it's going to be painted some of the uh, armor on the uh, arms uh, that had to be uh, put on first um, before it was painted but I'll go into that in more detail uh, in the next video but I was really pleased had a lot of fun adding on the detail uh, the reference uh, photos from the uh, cartoon uh, was a great he great help indeed. So really guys, uh, the next few minutes of this video is just going through uh, in more detail uh, with video and close-up pictures uh, of the extras that I have added on to this model. Uh, for anyone following along who'd like to do the same. So... While you're watching the end of the video, I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed uh, again to Nick uh, for his very kind uh, gift. Again, check out his channel, uh, details all down below for Grey Primer. And it leaves me to say thank you ever so much indeed to uh, all my subscribers and to all my followers. I really appreciate your continued support of my work and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Happy modelling!